Today I'm going to do a quick follow-up to my previous video, which confusingly I am recording before that video. Now what I want is a small CRT TV which supports PAL, NTSC and CCAM. Now according to some sources, this model supports all three, but that hasn't been my experience with it. So let's see what it does support. Now presently it's plugged into a PAL source, and yeah, of course it works because it's a PAL TV. So first of all, let's try out NTSC. Now you are seeing some flickering here because my camera isn't synced to this unit, but the main problem here is that it's monochrome. So let's try out Ccam and see what that looks like. And once again, it's monochrome. Well, this is actually a pretty good start. Now I don't think what I read about this TV is incorrect. It was sold into quite a few different markets, so I think there's probably some components missing in this particular unit. So let's open it up and see what we can find. And the first thing I'm drawn to here is a Chrominus processor, which is a Motorola MC44007. And it has a 17.73 MHz crystal attached to it, which is clearly four times the PAL color subcarrier frequency. And next to it is an unpopulated crystal, and I think this is why NTSC doesn't work. So let's have a look in the service manual. Now it says here that this is a 17.32 MHz crystal, and I don't think this is what we want. Now, I'm not actually sure what this is referring to. Now, I expect that to be a 14.318 MHz crystal, which is four times the NTSC color subcarrier frequency. So, I'm going to order one of those. The other missing component that is specified in the service manual is an 18 picofarad capacitor. Now, the data sheet for the Chromanus processor specifies a range of 20 to 30 picofarads. Now, I tried capacitors in that range because, frankly, I trusted that data sheet more than the Sony service manual. But the oscillator didn't start, so sticking the service manual was a winner. However, it likely depends on the crystal, so it's worth trying different values if it doesn't work first time. Now, the other thing that I should point out here is that in addition to fitting the missing components, there is also a procedure to enable NTSC in the service menu. Now, as for CCAM, it wasn't immediately obvious why it's not working, so I went back to the datasheet for the Chromanus processor, and it says in there that there's an alternate version which supports CCAM, specifically the MC44002, so I ordered one of those as well. Now, after all the components arrived, I soldered them in and put the TV back together. Now it is time to test it, and first of all, I just wanted to check whether or not it still decodes power, because of course, I have replaced the Chromanus processor, and thankfully, it does. Now I'm feeling fairly confident they should have at least one additional standard working here. So let's try NTSC. Well that is looking a lot better, we have some actual colour now. Now the multi-burst isn't looking all that amazing, but that just might be a limitation of this particular model. So let's try out CCAM. And once again, we've got some colour there, and it's looking pretty nice. So all in all, this has been a successful effort. Now, if that old CRT tally doesn't support all of the video standards that you want out of it, it's definitely worth checking if perhaps it did in another market, in which case a simple modification like this may be applicable. Anyway, that is it for now, so thanks for watching.